Second chance lady, welcome to phase one, find your emotional trigger and this specific module will dive deep into understanding patterns and body image related to emotional eating and why specifically some ladies just by their look they're more propensed to engage into unhealthy eating behavior and specifically what is regulated from. As you see here, there are ladies where, which doesn't really matter what they look like. They're very confident in themselves and they're very happy. Some ladies, even though they will look better, quote unquote, of these ladies, they find themselves very insecure, and as a result, they find themselves eating, uh, engaging into emotional eating patterns. And it comes down to really understanding why is the motivation, if you want to call it motivation, I'd rather to call it vision or specific, uh, you know, purpose that you have of you being able to finally build the body image you want. You do need to understand that part because otherwise you'll never understand why is it important, okay? Every time I ask why do you want to, you know, what is the main goal you have in the next 90 days, I get told different things. I get told I want to have a body of a fighter, you know? I want to be able to wear first the first time the bikini that I want. I want to win a competition. I want to be able to be more secure at work. I want to be able to have more energy to play with my kids, right? Uh, and it always comes down to really understanding what is the need into the, into the, into the, uh, you know, deep, not into the surface, deep inside on the, on the, on the actual problem, okay? And again, when it comes down to that, is that every time that you tell me I want to look like a fighter, chances are it's going to be related to security, right? You want to be more secure, more strong. Every time you want to be able to wear that specific dress is because you want to be able to be perceived from people in a specific way. Every time you want to be able to play with your kids, chances are you want to be a role model, right? And not understanding these specific, um, you know, uh, reasons as why they're important, they are enough for you to be able to live in the, what I like to call, hedonic, uh, hedonic frame of life, which basically means that the hedonic is like the person that always giving into pleasure, that doesn't really want to get out of comfort zone, that doesn't want to suffer temporarily to improve something on long term. And the opposite is the eudaimonic. The eudaimonic way of life is like, I understand that sacrifice is involved, and much like I sacrifice many things into daily, uh, you know, into into to into actions i'm going to be sacrificing the same in my health your belief dictate your daily action and, and chances are until today if you're not seeing the results you want to be seeing is because you have been living too much on the eudonic way of life okay and we're gonna dive deep into what it is later on but i'm gonna ask you this question i know this is bad i will have it one last time and then never more right how many times have you seen that and is this really working right? Like many times you have told yourself that or you heard people saying that, they always engage into the same behavior, including myself. I know exactly what it means because like I've been emotional eating for years now. Uh, and as I found that's a way to get out of that, you know, there is a lot of work to do, which starts from the psychology, okay? The, the find the phase number one, which is like find your emotional trigger. It really is really mostly psychology. And we need to understand why our psychology tricks the, trick us the way it is. And we already saw a few videos about it. And here, we're going to be uh, understanding how to uh, consciously do something about it, okay? And it, and it comes down to really understanding that confidence and self-esteem impacts decision, which ultimately impacts your opportunity, okay? And it's really about who do you see yourself as? If you see yourself as a perfectionist, chances are you're going to act like a perfectionist. If you see like yourself like a procrastinator, Right? If you're burned out from the job and you, you tell yourself, I'm going to do this tomorrow, and much like anything else, you're going to start your diet tomorrow. Right? If you are the emotional leader, you label yourself, you give yourself label, chances are this is going to you know, uh, let you act such an, like an emotional leader in several you know, situations. And this is going to be a big problem because this is really not about the food at this point. Right? might be that if you have a stressful day, this might be easier, and, and another day that it's not stressful, this might be a, a much, uh, it's actually, I said it wrongly, if, if, if you're a stressful day, it might be harder, if you have a less stressful day, it might be easier, but if you label yourself such as an emotional eater, chances are it's going to be always hard. And usually, it's really about the standards you set up for your life, 
right? The emotional, like the, the, the body image you built up for yourself, the belief that tells you what your emotional, your current body image is, right? But also that you don't have any recognition of what is a positive or negative body image. And why you don't have that is because you the social pressure, the advertisement, the media, the people you follow on Instagram, the people you follow on Facebook, it's really about seeing what you get thrown at every single day. All this celebrity that looks amazing and it doesn't really matter what they do, they're going to be, you know, like you tell yourself that you need to look like them, right? And you seeing yourself so distant from them makes you act like I don't really care. It's like I can do this today and, and then I'm going to start tomorrow, right? And, and all these actions usually are the reason why diets fail, right? They diet fail for psychological reasons, not for, you know, for any other reasons. And it comes down to not about the food itself, but about the tell the things you tell yourself, right? Like, I'm just going to have a, an extra bite and it won't hurt. You know, either it's two cookies or a banana, 150 calorie extra, at the end of the month is equal to 10 cheeseburgers, which equals to about 0.5 kilogram of fat, right? Much like when you say, I deserve a cheat meal, right? You set yourself up to fail. Like if you have a good diet during the week and you cheat meal three times a week, you basically come out to a average of 2,000 calorie. But if you cheat meal continuously, right, you will need to lower your calorie a bunch, right? Now in the next section, like when we talk about food, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna show you exactly what is a sustainable eating way that you can have fun food, that you can have food that you love without suffering, but you need to understand that this these things that happens here is really about psychology, okay? It's about things you tell yourself. You say yourself, I have, I, I exist, there are existence of forbidden foods, so I'm, I'm not going to be eating those, yet then you start yourself with, a, with, a, with an apple, and then you give in with three desserts, right? Or... You, you thought you're going to have this promotion, you're not having this promotion, or you have a bad argument in the job, and then you're getting, uh, you know, you go, go home and you tell yourself, I'm going to drink myself away or eat myself away, and, and this is going to improve. Of course, it does improve your, uh, your, your feeling for a little bit because, you know, the dopamine hit that you get from, from the sugar, for example, give you a little bit of relief, but that's usually lasts about 20 minutes, and, and this situation always repeat, uh, you know, always repeat and never really give you results. You fail to, um, you fail because you basically fail for the thing you allow yourself to believe, okay? I'm not good enough, I am a loser, I'm this, I'm that, and all these things you tell yourself really reinforce the situation. Now, how can you determine who are yourself, how can you determine your outcome? It's basically like saying, how do you see yourself, right? How do other people see you? What are your beliefs around yourself? You gotta be asking yourself this question, and this is an exercise that I want you to do uh, in in this specific module. These three questions are gonna be part of you going live inside the group, or you know, putting a post inside the group. And, and really, you need to understand uh, answering this question and understanding how can we apply. Now, there is a, an exercise I wanna do with you because before we talk about hedonic and eudaimonic way of life, and it's important for you to understand that. The hedonic way of life, we can, we can actually relate to real life example when it comes to stress. Most people fail because actually stress is, 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 is a very compelling argument. And, and usually when it comes to, to stress that you're actually feeling stuff on your body, this usually will impact the way you, you eat, right? But uh, I, I want to do this example with stress and anxiety with you because this, this is usually how people then... Uh, you know, fight fight back or act differently if they understand how it how that is work. So if you feel stress, you might be having a feeling the urge to eat a cupcake, right? When you eat the cupcake, you have a momentary relief, right, from from your brain, like I said before. Then you feel guilty. If you were to live instead of the eudaimonic, right, the only way for you to because people say, you know, I, I feel stress. I'm going to be eating that, and then I'm going to count my calorie, I'm going to cut, I'm going to restrict. That's me like a long time ago, like I used to do all that, right? But you never really get around that because you do not fix, you know, you do not fix the mind part, like you do not fix the comfort part, right? The way you want to be living that, on that, and, and you, you the monic way of life, that ultimately you're not going to be eating the cupcake because you realize, right, 
that yeah, there is a momentary discomfort, but you're getting comfortable on getting discomfort because as a result of that, you're going to have relief in personal growth. You're going to sleep better. You're going to feel better the day after because you have taken this longer and more uncomfortable you know, way for you to actually get to the results. Like if you can do that most times when it comes to food, you know, you will understand how to get comfortable getting uncomfortable, how to make the choices you know you gotta not to be making according to your belief, yet is important because, you know, there is this physiology part we're going to talk about in the next module uh, that, you know, at times, you know, like like taste buds in, in, your, in your tongue, like, you know, things in your, in, like sensation in your brain that want to be making you eat tasty food, palatable food, yet, you know, there are ways and, and times in your life that you want to be needing to take that uncomfortable decision for you to be able to ultimately get comfortable and grow, okay? So the importance you understand, you know, uh, when it comes to food and taking this decision, you know, getting uncomfortable, in the moment, right, like we talked about uh, a few modules ago about how to meditate to see your thoughts, to be able to engage with your thoughts and actually be, gain awareness, Right now, as you learn this exercise and then you practice that exercise, you want to be asking yourself, what's going on, right? What do I really need, right? And how, and can, fux, can food fix this, right? Like when you're about to eat that cupcake that you know is not good for you, just to feel better, is that going to fix your bad day? This is the question you got to be asking yourself. And really, what is you, what are you angry for, right? What are you angry for? What is it that you know, chocolate means to me or pizza means to me in that specific moment, you know, because just on getting to the deep issue, because we can be here and talk the whole night about, you know, you having a, a traumatic event or whatever the situation was on your childhood and, and why you're taking these specific choices when it comes to food is because I'm lonely, because I'm sad. And, and there are, you know, chemical components that tells you that chocolate is more, let's say, related to, to loneliness or whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, if you want to be stopping this behavior, you need to understand what's going on. Like, you need to understand, really, why are you angry for, and is this going to be fixing that, okay? So, as you understand that, and as we come to the conclusion of this video, I want you to go into the Facebook community, right? I want you to post or go live and list and getting aware about your bad habits, why you having these bad habits when it comes to food, how can you replace with good habits, and what are the parents and the emotional components, okay, of you getting that. So if you drink every weekend, like if you, if you have this pattern every weekend, we know that there is about 30 days to build a habit and three months then to master a habit, so six months in total, and it's important for you to be able to understand why you're doing certain things. And it's important for you to be able at least to acknowledge that you're doing certain things because if you don't, you know, then chances are you're not going to be able to get to the, um, to the other part, uh, of, um, you know, of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the behavior, right? So, like, you need to really understand why you're doing that specific choices and what is the emotion and patterns that happen on either a daily cadence or a weekly cadence and obviously this is going to give us indication first and foremost how your psychology works but also how can we reverse engineer a, a game plan for it to be able to then uh, at least trick your body into uh, and your physiology into be able to make the right choices most times now go to the facebook community go live or post it's very important you do this exercise i talk to you soon